No, I've been on this floor for 20 years. I, I point to what's engraved right above our president's head there. And I think you agree with me in, with that statement, don't you? Yes, sir. I, I think I saw you carrying a Bible the other day. Yes, sir. And before I ask you questions, I'll read just one sentence out of that Bible you carry. And if a stranger dwells within you in your land, you shall not mistreat him. Leviticus 19.33 Senator, I take offense at your amendment. Let me tell you why. First of all, we have been trying to be good neighbors in the area of the state that I live in. We have a long, long relationship with the Republic of Mexico. We've always tried to have programs of interchange where our kids or our students can go into Mexico, study there, and theirs could come here. I've even carried legislation, I don't have it before me, that would allow the very thing that you're trying to undo. Was this amendment heard in committee? I've been unable to get a uh, hearing, and uh, given that we're in the end, end period of the uh, legislative period, uh, I sought another vehicle to try to get the uh, the legislation. How many students did you say was going to be impacted? A little over 16,000. Which institutions are the most hit or impacted by your amendment? That was difficult to determine by LBB and the Higher Education Coordinating Board. Well, let me tell you, I know some of these students. I have face-to-face -face seen these students. Senator Van de Pugh was right. They didn't choose to come here at a young age, but now they're in college trying to make something of themselves. And if we in any way interfere, they won't get their education. And if someday they are deported for running a stoplight or something, then they go back to their so-called country. They don't have a home in those countries, by the way wherever they come, because they've been here most of their lives. And I saw many of those students on the, one of my college campuses crying, sobbing because the DREAM Act went down the tube in Congress. They wanted so badly to be American citizens, to have a piece of the American pie. And now what's happened at the federal level it's filtering down here with your amendment. I guess at the end of the session, your report card might have an A on it. But there'll be a zero, a zero for no opportunity for many of those young people that are less fortunate that you're going to be impacting with this amendment. I'm not going to belabor this debate anymore. But I'll read you one more line of Scripture. You shall have the same law for the stranger and, and for, one, for one from your own country. Leviticus again. I, I just hate where we're going. I just hate ahead, where we're going this session with this type of amendment legislation, Senator Duncan very eloquently told you, everywhere I go, Senator, there's bricklayers and roofers, country club workers, dishwashers that otherwise wouldn't be able to do the job, wouldn't have anyone doing the job that they're doing. They play an integral part. They want to educate their kids. And they want to be able to have an opportunity that they, the country they came from did not offer. Senator Uresti, for what purpose do you want to Senator Birdwell, I want to make sure that I understand your amendment that was joint authored by Senator Patrick, Senator Wentworth, Senator Nelson, and Senator Huffman. So what your amendment, if it goes on, will accomplish 
is the family would come over years ago and they bring their young kids, three-year-old, a five-year-old, and a one-year-old, who have no idea what's going on in their life, and brings them over to the United States and to Texas. They go to school. They do well. They stay out of trouble. They grow up and go to school with, with our kids, their kids, join the ROTC in high school, finish in the top 10%, graduate from high school, what you're telling those kids is they're going to be treated as, as out-of-state students within our junior colleges. That's correct. The, what are you uh, trying to accomplish? I don't understand. What are you trying, trying to, to accomplish? The fairness for the Texas taxpayer is what I'm trying to accomplish because what you've laid out to me is that means in perpetuity um, the people of the state of Texas, the citizens of Texas, uh, will forever be dealing with the cost of tuition associated with that. Okay, so let's take that point. So I'm trying to make sure that we're fair to the Texas taxpayer and to all non-residents, be they from Louisiana, Oklahoma, or anywhere else. Well, let, let's take that point about the taxes, because I disagree with you. It's not logical. So that kid goes to school, 16 years old, and gets a job. They take taxes out of his paycheck? Of course they do. Correct. They do. Yes. So he's a taxpayer or she's a taxpayer. That same kid has to go and buy jeans to go to school, buy tennis shoes. and They go to Sears or they go to Penny's or Walmart. Do they pay taxes? That's correct. Of course they do. So they're taxpayers. So I don't follow the logic about taking care of taxpayers because these people are taxpayers. These folks are taxpayers. They have to put gas in their vehicle like the rest of us, and they pay the exact same amount of taxes as you and I do, don't they? It uh, depends on whether they own a business or not as part of other taxes, but uh, they, they absolutely were primarily sales tax driven. Taxes on gasoline. When they pull up to the Valero and they put gas in their car, mm -hmm. nobody asks them for an ID and exempts them from paying taxes, correct? That's correct. So they pay the exact same amount of taxes per gallon of gas that you and I do, correct? Correct. So I'm trying to understand your logic then about taking care of taxpayers when that 16-year-old kid has paid the same type of taxes that your 16-year-old kid or my 16-year-old kid pays. Is that a correct statement? Uh, I would think so, depending upon the nature of what, uh, what folks are paying for. Well, then I'm but trying to understand your point about them not paying their fair share of taxes or taking care of the taxpayers. Tell me the difference then between those kids and your kids or my kids. This is not logical, Senator Birdwell. The question is associated with the nature of citizenship and are we making a demand on Texas taxpayers regardless of their background? So then your bill has to do with the nature of citizenship. Well, it deals with the fact that you've got folks that are lawful residents of the state of Texas and folks that are not lawful residents of the state of Texas. And we're treating them differently between lawful residents of other states that we charge out-of-state tuition and unlawful residents that we're charging in-state tuition here. My concern is for the Texas taxpayer, regardless of ethnicity, regardless of socioeconomic standing, my concern is for fairness to taxpayers of the state of Texas, regardless of whom they are. And I understand that. But using the example that I just laid out for you, that kid that's been here since he or she was one year old, let's compare them to one of your children or my children. Correct. They're growing up through the system. They get a job. They put gas in their car. They buy a dress for the prom. They go to work. They have taxes paid out. Hasn't that one year old throughout the system compared to your one-year-old and my one-year-old throughout the system paid the same type of taxes, the same amount of taxes? Could very well be. Then we're not treating that individual the same, are we, with your amendment? No, it's based upon lawful presence in the United States. So that's what your amendment is about. That's truly what you're trying to, to accomplish. We're, so it's not about being fair to the taxpayer. It is about being fair to the taxpayer based upon lawful presence in the United States. You realize, you understand that I represent two-thirds of the Texas-Mexico border. Yes, sir. From Eagle Pass to El Paso. Yes, sir. 
So this amendment strikes deep into the heart of my district. And I know a lot of families. I know a lot of my constituents that fall into this category. And I got to tell you, Senator Birdwell, I don't get upset very often on the Senate floor, but I'm very offended and I'm disappointed in your amendment because of what it does to those children that are here, not by their choice, no fault of their own, but because a decision was made years ago. And those kids have done everything that we've asked of them, of your kids, of my kids, and of every other kid, any other senator's children. They've done everything they're supposed to do, but because a decision was made years ago that they, they were going to come into the United States and to Texas, you're going to penalize those children with this amendment. Do you realize that? I'm trying to make sure we're compassionate on the Texas taxpayer that's asked to subsidize that education. That wasn't my question. My question was, Senator Burwell, you realize you're penalizing those children that have done everything we've asked them to do. You, you realize that. Forget the taxpayers for a moment. And let's focus on the children, because at the end of the day, on this Senate floor, you know, we talk about the taxpayers and we talk about big businesses, but we always forget why we're really here. We're really here to take care of the children, Senator Birdwell. Don't you agree with that? I'm here to make sure that the lawful citizens of the state of Texas are considered first by this body. I thought you would say that. Thank you, Senator Birdwell.